Welcome to Chapter 3, Social Science 110, European Exploration and Founding, and our look at uh, California, the Rawls and Bean textbook that we're using. And uh, this chapter starts with Hernán Cortés, a Spanish explorer, who uh, in 1533 launched the expedition that was ultimately responsible for the European so-called discovery of what the lower part of the lower part of what the Spanish called the Californias. Uh, and of course, the Native Americans would say, well, these Europeans got here and they say they discovered it, but of course, we as Native Americans knew these places were here all along. So uh, the word discovery is a relative term. Uh, much to the uh, surprise of the explorers in the Cortez expedition, uh, California was a peninsula, not an island. This is an early map of California, uh, which uh, depicted California as a mythical island. They had no idea really what was out there. This is all supposition. Uh, note in the upper part of the map that there is a, a mythical Strait of Anian, the heralded Northwest Passage that so many colonial entities uh, were looking for. Portugal was looking for it, England was looking for it, Spain was looking for it, but of course it never really existed. Um, the uh, legend of California comes from some author back in the you know, 13th, 14th century. Uh, some sort of a story about uh, an Amazon queen named uh, Calafia who ruled uh, California. But of course they found none of this when they got there and discovered that uh, Lower California anyway was really a peninsula and not an island. Uh, this is a great quote from the authors that I had to include in this PowerPoint. Because California's actual history has so often resembled romantic fiction, I'm assuming they mean in modern times, uh, it is not entirely inappropriate that it got its name from a novel. So this legend of uh, Calafia was so misleading that here we are in the 21st century and you know people's impressions of California outside of California, especially in other countries of the world is that you know we're all surfers, we all live by the beach, we're all cowboys or something like that. There's an awful lot of myth and legend of California which is so distorted from uh, reality. Uh, moving on in European exploration, this guy Cabrillo, uh, who I believe was actually Portuguese, uh, sailed from the west coast of Mexico. Uh, they had a port there in New Spain along the west coast of Mexico to explore Alta California and to search for this mythical northwest passage. And you can see by the Landsat image on the right that obviously California's lower portion is a peninsula. That part is part of Mexico. It is not an island. Uh, three months later, this guy Cabrillo discovered the harbor that is today San Diego. He named it San Miguel. Another explorer later actually changed the name. Uh, this is a map from Humboldt State University showing the physical geography of California with the uh, 58 uh, county boundaries, the, the boundaries of the 58 counties superimposed on it. So we get a kind of a, a breadth uh, to look at the, the uh, enormous uh, variation in physical geography that we have in California. So in 1542, uh, Cabrillo continued to explore, and he actually was exploring quite a lot in the Channel Islands. He had a skirmish with one of the Indian tribes on one of the islands, broke his leg. That leg became infected, and then he died on January 3rd, 1543. But amongst his last wishes included that his remaining party of uh, uh, men and his uh, troop would continue to explore the California coast, which they did, and they got as far north as southern Oregon before returning to west, the west coast of Mexico by April of 1543. Alas, they found no riches. Alas, they found no mythical Northwest Passage. Then came the English about uh, 40, 50 years later. Uh, the Englishman Sir Francis Drake was sent out by Queen Elizabeth I to annoy, in quotes, the Spanish, that's how they spell it in your book, and to find the Northwest Passage. Uh, what is noteworthy about Drake's expedition is that his boat was the second ship to sail all the way around the world. It was the first English ship to sail all the way around the world. And it was the first ship of any nation to do so under one commander only. So this is significant. Uh, he landed in a place which is now called Drake's Bay. He landed there specifically to repair his ship, the Golden Hind, which he had renamed. Uh, previously, the name of the ship was the Pelican. Uh, nothing, uh, no detail in the book as to why he renamed the ship. In any case, from the Drake expedition came the most detailed accounts to date of native Californians, specifically the coastal Miwok, who uh, lived in the area. So this USGS image shows you Drake's Bay relative to what we now call, of course, the Golden Gate. It is to what is today's Marin County. Then there was the era of the uh, Spanish trading ships called the Galleons, which sailed between the recently acquired uh, Philippine Islands, which are now under Spanish control in Southeast Asia, uh, and what is today Acapulco, which is a port uh, that the uh, Spanish uh, established in what is today the west coast of Mexico, New Spain. 
uh, in the mid to late 1500s. So the idea was that in exchange for the luxury goods from South and Southeast Asia, uh, they would trade these people with the silver and gold uh, from the mines of uh, Mexico, what is today's uh, Mexico. Uh, Spain's economic policies toward the colonies were, you know, rather discriminatory. And as a result of that, the king ordered that only one of these ships, one galley in a year, would sail. That began in the late 1500s. So what they had a tendency to do on these Manila galleons, since there was only one of these ships a year, was to place too much cargo on them. Uh, in, uh, well, basically, they put cargo on there uh, at the expense of not having enough food for their sailors. And so there was a lot of misery on these ships. Uh, starvation and scurvy and insanity and all the things that would re result that you would imagine would result from being deprived of creature comforts that you know people need food clothing shelter that sort of thing uh, and imag I imagine that a number of those ships actually sank because they were overloaded with cargo uh, this uh, then caused them to think well we probably should get a port um, a little bit closer in that voyage so we can at least make a stop along what is today's California coast uh, so that the journey between the Philippines and Acapulco would not be quite so arduous if we could take on you know more food more uh, more supplies and just have a bit of a respite um, there was a voyage by Sermino to, re uh, to find such a port it did result in the exploration of what is today's uh, coastline near San Francisco Bay but he sailed right by the Golden Gate without actually seeing it, probably because, as it is so many days of the year, because it was fog shrouded, at least that's the theory. Then this guy, Viscaino, came along, and uh, he was hired to explore the shore of uh, Upper or Alta California to find such a decent harbor, and he embarked on this voyage in 1602. He landed in what is you know, now being known as San Diego, recorded the impressions uh, that he had of the native people there, uh, and then continued northwestward and found this bay that he named after the viceroy of New Spain at the time, a guy named uh, Monterey. Uh, Sermino actually discovered this bay seven years before. Uh, Vizcaino reported back a very elaborate description of how wonderful this bay was, that it was a natural safe harbor, uh, that there was lots of timber nearby for the building of ships, and so on and so forth. But ultimately, uh, his uh, view of this was exaggerated and for a political purpose because Vizcaino was a lot more interested in commanding the next Spanish galleon. Um, so by naming the bay after the current viceroy, Monterey, he was hoping that he would get command of said Spanish galleon and have a lot of favoritism coming his way politically. Well, he did get the command of the next Spanish galleon, uh, but the next viceroy who took over after Monterey uh, distrusted Vizcaino, revoked his appointment, and did not pursue ultimately a port for California for, for galleons along what is today the California coast. They abandoned that particular task altogether. And because of that, uh, it resulted in a 167 year gap between the time of Vizcaino in the early 1600s and actual Spanish settlement of Alta California, which wouldn't come until the late 1760s and 1770s. Um, the policies against uh, the uh, California Indians uh, by Spain uh, were not necessarily all that great uh, from everything historians have uh, said and written about, done research on. Volumes and volumes have been written about this. Uh, so strange, Spain strategized uh, that the way to transform uh, this area and have more control of it was to uh, convert the Indians into colonists by implementing the Spanish mission system. The Spanish mission was the combination of religious, economic, military, and political motives. So basically it's like this. Uh, they would convert the Native Americans of California and make them Roman Catholic. Uh, there was a great deal of resistance to this, as you might imagine, because they had their own worldview, which was more traditional and animist in nature. Um, they would make them speak Spanish, um, and there would be a gradual intermarriage and intermixture of the Spanish and the indigenous people to essentially, over time, uh, create this new uh, bunch of people who would then uh, be loyal to the Spanish crown. Uh, the picture on the right is an early photo of the mission San Diego de Alcala. I imagine it was before it was, um, you know, uh, renovated. This is in what is today San Diego. This comes uh, courtesy of the Journal of San Diego History. This whole mission system as a frontier institution had its roots in the struggle against the Moors in Spain. So it was in the um, 
uh, 13th and 14th century that the uh, Spanish Catholics uh, began to kick the Moors out of southern Spain and push them back across the Mediterranean into North Africa. And so the authors describe this mission system as cross and sword moving forward together. Now, the missions initially were supposed to be these religious institutions to convert uh, the indigenous and then the Spanish would intermarry with them and then over 10 years time it would be converted to more of a secular institution as a town or a pueblo with a farm and uh, an industry and so on and so forth and then the uh, priests that were in charge of the mission initially would move on to another location to do the same thing. Well, they were never able to meet this 10-year schedule in, in any of the missions that they set up. Um, the mission priests treated the Indians as children, made them very dependent. They had a very inferior view of the Native Americans, uh, which is often the case whenever Europeans came over to the New World, as you well know. Uh, initially, the Jesuit order was in charge of the establishment of the first missions in both Baja California, that means the peninsula, and southern Arizona from the 1600s through the mid-1700s. But King Charles III of Spain in 1767 removed the Jesuits he put a guy named Galvez in charge of this. Um, he was thinking that the, um, the, the Jesuits were not really acting in the interest of the crown and leaned too much and had too many sympathies with the natives. So he replaced them with the Franciscans who he perceived to have more allegiance to the King of Spain. Uh, Galvez at this time in the late uh, 1760s held the position of visitor general uh, which was in some cases uh, considered to be a more powerful position than actually the viceroy of New Spain. Uh, Galvez was described by the authors of this book as being brilliant, uh, as well as being vain, selfish, ruthless, forceful, and generally unstable. So this guy, well, he kind of seemed like he was, uh, you know, quite brilliant at times and then kind of insane at other times. Uh, in any case, he was in charge. And in spite of his uh, juxtaposed personality, uh, Galvez was primarily responsible for enabling the Spanish to occupy and settle uh, in San Diego and in Monterey. So settlements in these two places actually materialized under uh, the visitor generalship of Galvez. Uh, Galvez's plans to colonize Alta California uh, were based on the old fear that some other European power would do it if Spain did not, threatening Spain's empire. We've heard that many times before in history. And he also argued that Alta California, meaning the dirt we're on today, would be a source of revenue for the crown, but at the time that Spain controlled it, it actually ran a deficit. It was more of a liability than an asset. Uh, and even though uh, Spain controlled this area for a long time, its control of this area was, was weak, but it was strong enough to prevent other entities from taking it over from Spain, like say Russia or England, uh, and pave the way for the United States to eventually acquire it. And of course, it became a state uh, in 1850. Then there was the era of Father Serra, uh, who was a Franciscan uh, priest uh, born on the island of Mallorca, which was part of Spain in 1713. He gave up a professorship in 1748 in favor of being a foreign missionary. He was assigned to a mission in what is today's Mexico City. Uh, he was uh, known for being uh, extreme in his, uh, in his faith. He would beat himself with chains and deprive himself of sleep and food and all kinds of things. He was known for these manifest manifestations of zeal, as the authors say. Um, he became father president of the prospective new missions in Alta California in 1769 and indeed founded Alta California's first nine the first nine of the ultimate 21 missions that were founded in Alta California uh, part of this sacred exp expedition that was under the command of Captain Gaspar de Portola uh, there were three ships and two land parties that were launched from Baja in 1769 they faced many many hardships uh, the first goal was to establish a presidio and a mission at San Diego. Uh, they got as far north as what is today the Bay Area Peninsula without actually discovering the Golden Gate and came back uh, by January of 1770 uh, back to what is today San Diego. Uh, they finally got new supplies. They thought they had been abandoned by their Spanish compadres uh, in March of 1770. Uh, Portola sent Sarah and a guy named Costanzo and then a guy named Fagas up to uh, Monterey Bay to establish a presidio and mission there, which they did in 1770. So that's a little bit about European uh, exploration and founding of uh, what ultimately became California.